cat is back, um, sitting right in front of me. Um, so I'm going to try my best here. Extract. Let's take the E and extract. Um, the first one gives you x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 is equal to 0. x2 is 0 on the second one, and x3 is 0 on the third one. So I can conclude that there's only one simultaneous solution. So I was asked before, if one of them screws up, does it mean that all, all of them screwed up? Yes, because you're looking for a simultaneous solution. So if I had three planes, I'm looking for the point of intersection from the three planes. So because three planes are inside a three-dimensional space, my coordinates will be three. It's just like if X2 doesn't have a prescription or Y doesn't have a prescription, like Y is equal to, you know, it wasn't given to you, then you don't have a, you know, if it was, uh, gave you an inconsistency on the second equation, then there automatically is no solution. That means the two lines don't intersect. So here on the second one, the first step is to extract. So I get x1 minus 8x3 is equal to minus 6. And the second equation is x2 minus 4x3 is equal to 7. There's an infinite number of solutions. But again, let's go through the habits um, and write. How do we write and express those infinite number of solutions? Because here I'm working with planes and there's a specific line of intersection. When it's just two lines and you have an infinite number of solutions, it's obvious that the two lines became one line and the formula is given to you right away. Here, when you, I have two planes, for example, that intersect in the form of a line, I need to have the formula for the line. Or I could have all three planes with the same plane. So you could have a lot of things going on. So what do I do? I first extract that, I first solve the x1 x1 is 8x3 minus 6. And I, I did this because x3 appeared in both of these equations. So x3 has no prescription. But once I choose x3, so for example, if I choose x3 to be 0, x2 is then 11, uh, 7, and x1 is minus 6. So x3 can be chosen, but the le once it's chosen, the other two are prescribed. So x3 is what we call a free variable. I'm free to choose it, and the other two become prescribed. How do I write this in the proper form with what we call the basis vector popping out? Well, I take the, first of all, I split off the numbers. I have a minus six plus seven and a zero. So the minus six plus seven and zero come here as a separate vector. And the eight x three, four x three, and x three stay by itself. And then I factor out the x three. So it has an infinite number of solutions that are multiples of the vector 841 added to the vector minus 670. That's how we express it, and that's coming, and so you might as well practice it now. Same thing with number three. Uh, all of these, step one is to extract, and step two is to conclude. So if I extract the first one, I get zero is equal to one, when I write that, um, well, well, that just can't happen. So we say the system is inconsistent and there is no simultaneous solution for G. And I, I'm not going to do H. I'm going to let you do H. These are all kind of uh, the same thing over and over. And in fact, I'm not even going to do number eight because number eight is just like number seven. I'm going to let you work through this. Um, it's always extract then conclude. And take good habits on this. Don't go, you know, I know that some of you are just going to go, uh, unique solution, infinite number of solutions. You're just going to go whipping through these. But get into the good habit now because um, learn from 2016. The plebs there said it was very difficult to learn. It just gets harder and harder. So it, put all those as many times as you can together while you're doing the web assign. It'll take five extra minutes to do it and it'll give you so much more practice.